Welcome to Carry Tootie. I'm Ingrid Carlson, and today we are going to be playing with this air dry clay from Dollar Tree. If you are not already a subscriber, I would love for you to join us and make sure you click that little bell so that you get notified anytime a new video comes out. So in conjunction to one of my Dollar Tree shop with me in hauls, I had picked up this air dry clay and you guys said you wanted to see how to use it. So we are going to play with that today. I'm also going to use this cutting mat. Um, well, it's actually like a protective mat that I use on my work surface. And as you can see here, it's got like some watercolor paints. It's actually two of the cutting mats that are found in the kitchen department at Dollar Tree, and I've just attached them using some packing tape. But either way, you want something to protect your surface. I'm, I've never worked with this, so I'm not sure if this color, this terracotta color, is gonna come off on my hands or not. So we're gonna be um, preemptive about that. You're gonna wanna get a mold or ice cube trays, which I've shown you how to use these before. These are from Walmart, I believe. And then these, I think I picked up on Amazon. And any products that I use, if I can, I will have them linked in my Amazon storefront for you to take a look at. So first, let's go ahead and open this. And another thing you're going to want is if you're not using all of the product, air dry clay means that it's going to dry with just air, meaning you do not have to heat it up like you would a polymer clay. Let's see. So here it says it air dries, paintable when dry, moldable, easy to use. There's really not much, that's, I think that's in French. Let's see if it's in English here, okay. Add water to soften or join pieces. Store unused clay in an airtight container. Do not store clay once water has been added. Probably creates molds, I'm gonna guess. Okay, it says keep finished product away from open flame. Do not put in oven, microwave, or kiln. This product contains wheat, not food, adult supervision required. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a piece of this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, so just like I thought, it is leaving a residue behind on my fingers. You can see there, it's cast. So you might wanna wear gloves. So I'm just warming up the clay just to get it more pliable. And I'm going to stick it, we're gonna use this mold. And I'm just pushing it to the edges. And if this, if you wanted this to be completely flat, this is maybe where you would take the water and then just run your finger across it to try to smooth out. You can see a little bit of ridges. That does not bother me in the slightest. We're gonna try to pop this out. The nice part about using silicone is just what you're seeing here is that you can pop pieces out. And look, that is so pretty. And you saw I made that very quickly. So I'm gonna leave that there. We're going to try out a little bit bigger one. And this is going to be, we're gonna work on this now. I'm going to stop the video, let this air dry for probably 24 hours, and then I'll come back to the video to show you the results and then we're gonna try to paint the pieces. Some of you might want this color. <laughs> Look at my hands. Um, I think that's a little too much. But if you don't, then I'm gonna show you we're gonna paint it and try it out. 
the initial thing that I noticed when it flattens out, it does create these little ridges, like crackling almost. Which this one did have. You can, hold on, let's get in frame here. You can kind of see here around the edges. But I think that's going to add to the vintage -y feel of the piece. If you have never done clay pieces, I definitely suggest you try it. They're so much fun. Now, these aren't pieces that you necessarily would use in your junk journal in the pages in between, but what they would be good for is for dangles or ornaments on the front of your journal. So this definitely left some residue in my mold. I believe that when you're working with a mold, you can also use some cornstarch and just lightly dust the mold with cornstarch to probably avoid that. That's pretty intricate. You can see right here, like on the edges right there that you can see like that little crackling, but I think it is really beautiful. I also just recently came across a recipe for air dry clay that you make yourself. And if that's something that you'd be interested in learning how to do, we could probably pick up the products used at Dollar Tree as well. Um, leave a comment down below and let me know. And we can definitely do that. And when we do that, it would be white. So you don't have to deal with the terracotta color. But again, don't be off put by it because we are gonna be able to paint this. The main thing that I would say is that when you're working on it, as you can see there, it's kind of concaved or, you know, it's like dipped in the middle here. So I just want to use my finger to manipulate it and so that it's more flat. and you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want. I don't know if I got it all the way down, so we're gonna go ahead and... Okay, I think I took it out too quickly, but let's see. Okay, so I definitely took it out too quick. Let's try this again, and I'm gonna use less clay this time. I find that when you are rubbing it, you can also use like a little rolling pin, but do not use one that you're gonna use with food. You can use like something on your desk too, like I have this little jar, so this would be fine if I wanted to roll it out. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of flatten it out just a little bit in my fingers. And I'm gonna stick my finger into it. And in a mold like this, it's a little bit deeper, so I think I'm gonna have problems with this one, regardless. Um, you might want to use the cornstarch. I do not have any, I was trying to see if I have like any kind of baby powder. 
I'm gonna go the opposite route and we're going to try a little bit more clay and see if that would help. So I already know if I do this, it's going to be easier to, oh, maybe not, to pull out. Also, the less that you push down into it, the better it will be. I did this with um, air dry clay from Daiso and I had a really great result with using this mold. I'm going to And you can see if you spend time with it and smooth it out, you can smooth out those edges. If you, that's especially important, I guess, if you are using it as a trinket or something where you're going to see the backside of it. If it's laying flat on your piece, I don't think that that's very important. Okay, we're gonna try again. And since I noticed that it was giving me the hardest time up at the top. Okay. So what I would do with this one is I would just, you know, work it a little bit with my fingers. This one was definitely harder to do, which is kind of funny that it would be easier on a more intricate pattern than a less intricate pattern. I also think that the depth of this had to do with that. So um, I'm going to try it. I think these molds are for fondant working with, did I say that right? <laughs> working with um, cakes. And so I'm gonna try, and also because this is so thick, this is gonna take longer to dry. I already, I'm already sure of that. Okay, I'm actually going to do one of the, well, yeah, and we're gonna try one of these first. And see. So on this one, I am going to have to push down into it. to grab a palette knife and see if I can just scrape this. Ooh. So that was very hard to do and didn't give me a very good result. But the inside is so pretty. So I think it still kind of worked. Let's try that again with a little less. So I think for me, just my initial reaction to it is it is not the most forgiving to work with. I think that there are definitely better brands of air dry clay but if you wanted to try your hand at it, you can. So here, so that's where the problem lies is that as you can see here, this should have cut off like all these little pieces and it didn't, which you can still get a cute 
print from. So I'm not going to totally dismiss it, but that is a setback. I feel like the clay, when you first pull it off of the brick, it's good. I feel like as even five minutes of air hitting it, it's not that nice. So that clay that I just used had been sitting for a minute. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this. And I'm going to sit. See if I can work a little bit better. I'm gonna take a little more time and kind of push the clay. You know, like when you're working with a pizza dough and you have to kind of manipulate it to go into the direction you want. So normally when I'd be using air dry clay, I could put a big kind of glob on it and then I could scrape off the excess, but it doesn't seem to work with this. I could use my X-Acto knife again, which maybe I'll pull out. So again, if you wanted to sit here and play with the, the back, you know what else we could do? I'm gonna grab a little piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna grab this. Oops. So off the bat, I could tell that that definitely okay. It definitely um, spread it out more. kind of hard with those little intricate pieces, but we're going to try. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling towards me with the palette knife. And trying to get any excess up. Okay. I think that's pretty good. that broke already yeah it's crumbling we're gonna try another one where we don't scrape it off and see I can already tell you that's not gonna work okay hold on let's try to mend this a little bit okay so that that worked with us doing that, look how beautiful that is. And I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know that I can glue that in place, but I'm gonna show you one more time on here, just using it straight out of here and not cutting the excess off the back and you can compare the two. The other thing we'll do is once this has completely cured, and dried, then we will try to make it, um, we'll try to sand it and see if that works. And I wouldn't sand like a whole big pile of this, but I think if um, you have just a little bit like on Let's say that one, if you wanted to sand it, if you wanted to sand it more so that it's more of a flat surface, I think that that's a possibility. But like something like this, I, I wouldn't sand it all the way down so it's flat like this one, but you can flatten it so it doesn't have as many ridges. I feel like with this one, I can already tell that it is going to come up pretty well. I'm gonna run this
And I'm gonna say it is, for me, the color is a little off-putting. So this is gonna come off a lot easier, but I'm gonna show you the difference. When you don't scrape away the excess, you're going to be left with the this piece right here. Now, a workaround, you have two options. Actually, let's make another one so I can show you. So this one I'm gonna leave intact, and then this one I'm gonna make the exact same thing. Try to get the same amount of clay. And then we are going to cut away at it using the palette knife. And I think I used a little more clay because it's going into the other designs. I'm going to try to scrape it off a little bit. I also have a fan running in my room and I'm not sure how much that will affect the outcome. I definitely don't want that. Oh, well, we're going to cut this one, so it's fine. I'm not going to worry too much. Okay. The nice part about using like a big clump like this is that you don't have to worry about being intricate and so special with it. Like, look, I got a piece of the the other, the bottom here. So now I'm going to, I think this was leftovers. I'm gonna actually toss this. And if you have animals, you guys know that I have Barkley in here with me a lot. I'm not gonna throw that in my garbage cause I'm not sure the toxic level of it and I don't want anyone to get sick. And I'm not saying that, gar that <laughs> Barkley eats out of the garbage, but he does sometimes, <laughs> or I should say he tries to. So I'm just going in. It's kind of hard for me because I'm sitting away from this. Normally I would stand like directly above it, but since the camera is there, I can't do that. And we're just gonna go through and I'm gonna just kind of cut around the edges. I'm looking at this like fussy cutting. I'm not going to be too precious about it. I just want to get the majority off. Now you can see here it kind of left a, a ridge. So I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of roll it to give it. See, but what happened there was I lost some of the dimension. So I'm going to go add it back in. <laughs> And you can get in as detailed as you want. This is a pretty intricate design, so you could spend a lot of time trying to get at every nook and cranny.
And I know that at this point, like I was just thinking as I was cutting along, that this could be a little tedious for some of you, like me usually, but I believe that the end result is gonna be very pretty. And so I think it's gonna be worth it. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and let them dry. I'm gonna probably use this little piece of parchment paper, put them all on, put them in a tall, safe space where no one can get to them. And I'm gonna let them dry for 24 hours and I will be back. I wanted to hop on really quick to show you, I just rinsed these off. I used some warm water and it seemed like the clay almost completely melted with water. And, oh, I left some mess there, but I think I used one of these. I don't know, I think it was that one. So you can see it came pretty clean and I didn't even have to use soap on it. I did use a paintbrush with like a kind of more of a stiff bristle to get, this one seemed to be giving me the most problems because it's pretty deep in there and that really helped. I'm back and it's day two where our pieces have had a little more than 24 hours to cure. And so we're gonna just take a closer look at them. So even looking at this one, which is the thickest one, I believe it's about half an inch thick. Yeah, it's almost half an inch thick. It feels pretty solid. It feels like it's dried all the way through. What I can tell you is there are little like bits that came off of the molds. And if you've ever been to a softball field and had that like red clay dirt, and once it's dried, it's like crumbly and then turns into like dust, that's how this feels. So that's what I'm gonna compare it to. Another um, big observation that I made is obviously the color. It dried a lot lighter. So our original color was this terracotta. And then you can tell it's lightened quite a bit, which I'm excited about because I think painting them is going to be that much easier. And also I think some of this, this color brown, I think will be very pretty coming through distressed. The smaller pieces are definitely very delicate. I feel like if I even gave it a little bit of a a little twist, it's going to break. We're going to try right here with these pieces. Yeah, like that was very easy to break. So I'm gonna see how this does glue down to a surface, if it's going to crumble on us, if maybe putting some kind of sealant over it, maybe a gesso or a matte medium, a Mod Podge, Mod, yeah, Mod Podge, um, something like that on top of it may be the answer to it. And so let's go ahead and get started and we're going to paint. For the painting, I'm gonna have a few different options. I have some gesso, which I will have linked in. And any, like I said before, any products that I use that I can, I'll link them in my Amazon storefront. But we have some gesso, some white, titanium white acrylic. I also pulled a couple of these folk art. This is in seashell pink and this one is in French blue and they're both really pretty colors. I pulled some of this, if you guys haven't seen me use this before, I love this paint. And this is from Target. I don't know if I can link this one or not. 
And then I also pulled this, which is, if I can find the name, Vanilla Ice Cream, which is a really pretty, like, creamy white color. So we're going to start. I'm going to grab a kind of more of a medium size brush. I'm going to get a stiff bristle as well as a soft bristle, and we'll play with both. When I'm talking about a stiff bristle brush, I mean something like this, that when you push down on it, it's not going to completely give. I'm using one of these like cheapy brushes that comes sometimes with like kids watercolor sets and you can see the difference. This one's real floppy. And then I grabbed a small brush just in case I needed to get inside like some of these crevices. So I think I'm going to take, let's see. I think I'm going to start with this one and we're going to start with some gesso. And I'm going to start with the fluffy brush to see what results I get. It's actually nice. It is going in the crevices pretty nice. For me, I would personally cover, well, I guess it depends on what you're going to use the product for. If you are going to glue it down, then obviously you don't need to paint the backside unless you want to. If you are using it as a trinkle, a trinket, or if you're going to use it as a trinket or anything else where the backside might show, then you need to keep that in mind. And the way that I would personally paint this is I would paint the sides and the top, let it dry, and then flip it over and paint the back. So, so far, I really am enjoying this um, brush. There. The next one, I'm going to try to use that same brush and gesso for this piece. So I feel like off the bat, and it could be because I used a little bit less product on this, so I'm going to try it like kind of layering it on more, but I feel like your, my original guess was that a stiffer brush would work better, which I do still think is the case. Now something like this, like this piece, I don't see it being a dingle, I don't see how Real, I mean, I guess it could be. Oh, did you guys see that? That little piece just fell off. So you definitely want to be very delicate. Oh, darn. Another little piece fell off as that happens. So... Okay, I'm gonna rinse this off. And now we're going to go in with just a white paint. And I'm also gonna try to go in just directly with, let's say one of the, um, the colored paints right off the bat and see how, how that does. Grab a napkin. Now this is a titanium white and this white is pretty opaque, meaning it covers pretty well. 
So it's gonna give me similar coverage, I'm guessing, of a gesso. The biggest difference is with the gesso, it has a chalkiness to the paint, whereas the acrylic does not. And then we will see when it dries, this one should have a little bit of a sheen on it, whereas the gesso should be flat. And that could be part of your decision as well as which one to use. This is definitely stickier, I can already tell. You can even see as I'm brushing, it's not as, as easy to work with as the gesso was. And right off the bat, this one's definitely covered more, but I do think that some of this has absorbed into the clay. I'm going to try the pink. Actually, I'm gonna try this color. much on the product but that's okay I'm gonna go ahead and do this one let me get every little nook and cranny in here and again some of it oh so I'm not putting that much pressure on it at all and you guys saw that that just came right off um but again I was saying that if you like kind of that shabby chic look then you might not want to cover every cranny so you might want it to have a little bit of that brown exposed which I think is really pretty as well. So definitely on the pieces that are sticking out, even though that by itself is very pretty. So I'm scared to do the edges. Maybe I'll just tap them. And how about we switch brushes to the soft brush? Let's see if that makes any difference. And I think it is going to make a difference in that aspect. And that soft brush is definitely going to let you get inside of the little pieces that you missed. Okay, we're going to try the pink. And right off the bat, I, <laughs> I think I said that before, but I can see that this is still a little on the shiny side. It's still a little tacky, whereas this is almost completely dried and it's matte. I'm gonna do the little pieces. I'm gonna treat this like I would little scrap pieces of paper that no piece is going in the garbage. Not on my watch. You're gonna get used. And we're gonna try the blue on the other piece. I know I have some yellow on there, but we're gonna ignore that yellow. <laughs> 
because I think I like the gesso, which I'm gonna do with these pieces as well. I'm gonna do gesso and then the color on top. Oh, this blue is so beautiful. I've never been a big blue person until probably the, well, actually that's not true. I love blue and white china, but as far as creating with blue, it's never been the color that I reached for, except for the last year I've fallen in love with blue. What's one of your favorite colors that you've, that you feel like you, actually I wanna know what's a color that you always gravitate towards and always grab? For me, it's probably either white or pink or like creams or pinks. And then what's a new color that is new to you to, to grab? It's always so interesting to get everyone's point of views because not everyone is coming from a shabby chic background or um, you know, a background that loves pinks. There's a lot of you out there that love all different colors and um, textures and stuff and more grungy or steampunk and So I definitely like you the feel of this a lot better. This is a lot heavier too than these pieces because you're dealing with a lot more clay. But I really like the feel of it. Also, I feel like I don't have to be as precious with it. I can kind of hit it a little bit, take out my aggressions on, on the clay. I'm gonna try the, this piece. So I think that if your piece is thicker, then my recommendation is probably the stiffer brush. And the reason being is when I have a lot of like, see how it's all gooped up on the brush and I like put it here, when I start to brush it, it actually starts moving the paint around for me. Whereas when it's on that soft brush, you can see it starts gathering like in the crevices. Like you can see right here where it is collected. Whereas here, those it's like empty. It just has the color, but it doesn't have like paint gathered inside. If you hear those uh, little jingling bells in the background, it's sparkly. He says, hello, he just got a haircut and he looks so cute. And <laughs> my daughter said, you shouldn't have cut him because now he has so much pretty privilege that he's going to get away with everything. Except for this morning, he would not come in. He thinks it's a joke to run away. And I think the majority of my neighbors, I don't know about yours, but have ring cameras. So I was on probably several ring cameras about to um, <laughs> lose my mind pretty much in my PJs. So, um, he hasn't done it to me in a long time. He did go through, you know, he's still fairly puppy. And so he did go, he's like a teenager right now, but he did go through that phase where he didn't want to come inside. And like, he was so stubborn. He would stay out there for an hour. If you just close the door and let him stay, he would stay. Um, and he hasn't done it to me in a while, so I wasn't really prepared for it. And today he wanted to be out there because a couple of the houses were having 
like work done or they had people there and so he wanted to sit out there and look and bark and you know so we're still not on talking terms yet you know he's doing his thing I'm doing my thing and <laughs> but he is cute and I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then I remember from yesterday, I think it said do not put near heat. So I was gonna try to hurry up and dry this by using my heat gun, but I'm thinking that might not be a good idea. Also, I think that if you have the time to do maybe multiple layers of paint, on these pieces then it's going to give them more structure and allow them to have a longer shelf life This one was pretty sloppy. I didn't do that great a job with it. All right, let me wipe my hands just a little here. Oh, I forgot the heart. Well, I think the heart should just go straight pink. Pink and gold. Let's see, you know, it's funny because that's the front originally, but I kind of feel like the backside is more smooth. But I think I like the, um, kind of the grunginess of this better. And hopefully by the time I'm done with this, I can move on to the next, to the ones that are, or hopefully they're dry. Okay, I'm gonna go, well, actually I don't think I should wash my hands yet. That's, this feels, if not dry, almost dry. This one is definitely dry. This is dry. So I'm gonna say that the dry time, even though this feels pretty dry to me as well, I was gonna say that the dry time on the gesso might be quicker than the dry time on the paint. Look at that blue, that's so pretty. And with the brown, that's really, really pretty. So now let's, Maybe add a little bit of gold. I think I want this. Nope. I think my finger is going to be my tool of choice. That way I can get the raised edges. This is very French, this cream with the gold. Pretty. And I think that's going to be really pretty too. Oops, I got a little 
little too much gold there. I'm going to maybe leave one of these white, maybe this one. I'll add a little gold to it. And then I think, oops, I almost dropped it. I think I'm going to paint the others because I really like that like the creaminess of that. I'm gonna see if I have, let's see. You know what I can do. I'm gonna take my white. I'm just gonna do a little dollop. And I'm gonna add just a tinge of blue, like barely any. That much blue, maybe a little more. Come on. Okay, that much blue, and then I'm gonna add some of this cream and mix it, and I should get a pretty color. I think it needs a little more yellow, maybe. Okay, let's start with that one. I think it's a little too blue. No, I just got a text from my husband that my ink just got dropped off. So some of you guys already know that I I have a, an, a laser jet printer and my toner was running out. So I'm switching over, I'm, at least I'm giving it a shot to go to an ink printer and I'm doing the HP Instant Ink Club. And I bought a new printer this weekend but my, that's a much prettier color, but the ink, <laughs> I only made 30 copies or prints and it completely ran out of ink from the brand new. And I, I know that the printers, they don't come when you buy them, they don't come with a ton of ink, which I don't understand that in the first place, but that's fine. Cause either way you have to buy their, anyways, besides the point. I wasn't expecting it to run out that quickly. So I am waiting for the ink to arrive. And I just got a text that it's here downstairs. Um, and so I'll let you guys know how it goes. But um, if you do research and um, you already have an ink printer and you're interested in it. It's actually a really cool program where it you're on Wi-Fi, so it automatically knows when your ink is becoming short and it will send you ink and then you pay for what you use. So, um, you know, because I do printables, actually, I think I'm going to do this one pink because I do printables. I got one of the like bigger packages because that way it can let me print as much as I need to. And then I can always back down the following month. But, ooh, yeah, we're gonna go with pink. Um, and so anyways, I get, I don't remember how many prints, but let's say you want the $100 or the 100 print one, you pay 
whatever that price is, maybe 12 bucks, I think, maybe, something like that. And then you can print, so it doesn't matter if you're printing something that it's like, you know, with the printables where it's full page flood, where you have the ink on every square inch of the page, you're only paying per page. So it's actually a really great deal if you wanna do printables a lot or if you do printables a lot, because I think you're going to end up saving money in the long run. So I will have my um, link in the description down below. And if you sign up using the link that I give you, then you get a free month, plus I get a free month of ink, which is a really cool deal. And Lori had told me about that, about the ink club. So when I was on the phone with them, they asked me, um, I had, you know, said that she, I was telling them that I was switching because she had done it and she loved it so much. And so I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. Worst case, I, I don't love it. And I go back and, you know, the terms are really nice because you can cancel at any time. And then also, if you buy a new printer, if you're in the market for a new printer right now, um, you might be able to get some other months free on the Instant Ink. I don't know those promos, so I'm, I can't tell you what those are, but um, it, like you, it could be a thing. So, um, so anyways, I think it's a really good program. And he was the one that was like, oh, you get a free month. And I was like, I was assuming she would, but I didn't think I would um, for joining. I thought her referring me would get it, but we both got it. And so I thought that was really cool. And I was able to like send her a message and say, hey, you're gonna get a free month. Okay, um, so really quick while I was talking and I was doing this pink, I like this pink better. It's more, I don't know, maybe because the brown is coming through. Same with this. I like it better without the gesso. Um, and I know this stuff's not dry yet, but I'm gonna go, oops. I'm gonna go in with some of the gold anyways. And you don't have to use, I'm gonna actually grab, oh, what if we did pink here? Let's try that. Okay, hold up. Um, let's see, can I add a little extra gold? Oh, that's really pretty. That's really pretty. And I was gonna grab, I don't know if I have any upstairs, so I'm gonna see if I have any um, like browns or, let's see. Actually, I don't, but what I do have is, I think I have Distress Ink, and so I can probably use that. Let's see. So I think this color that I have is the, the brushed corduroy, I love this color, but it's definitely more a little on the yellow side. I'm just gonna put it here. And then I'm going to take my brush with some water on it, but I don't want the color on it. And 
activate that. And then I'm gonna take that in. <gasps> That's yummy. And this one still has the the um, paint is still a little wet, so it's gonna more um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna mix more than it is like stay on top. Whereas that one kind of didn't mix with the. Okay. All right. I'm going to go wash my hands and hopefully let this dry just a little. Let's see this one. I feel like I'm going to add a little of the pink to this. Okay. I'm going to now go wash my hands and let this dry a little bit and I'll be right back. These are pretty much dry now, but I think they came out lovely, especially with the gold. They look like little antique pieces. They're so beautiful. I'm going to show you how they look on some finished pieces. I'm going to take this tag that I made probably last year. And I'm just going to show you. These are the same. Let's try this. That'd be pretty. Let's try another one. This one's more in like oranges and browns, so I would pick something like this. Actually, that would look kind of pretty like that. I think that one definitely has to have that. I should have made more with blue because I think that would have looked pretty if it had like another piece. Let's add some pink. Let's put it under this. And so again, these aren't pieces necessarily that you're putting inside of your journal, unless you want it really, really thick. But I wouldn't do that anyways, because these are probably pretty delicate. And I would definitely use a glue like, like either a, I think that a glue gun would work well. I also think Fabri-Tac would work well, and maybe even like an E6000. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. These would actually work really well with tags. So pretty. This one's probably my favorite piece of all. Well, here they are on the finished products. And I think that the clay is a definite buy. I think that it's very versatile in 
projects, not just for junk journaling, but other projects, other crafty projects that you might have. So I definitely think that for $1.25, it was really worth the price. I ended up really liking the brown, which I am very surprised about. I thought that the color, and you guys even saw that in the initial video, my initial reaction was that I did not enjoy that brown color, but it ended up being very pretty when it was painted on top of, which I believe this was the original brown. So I definitely think that um, I'm a new, I have a new love for the air dry clay from Dollar Tree. Again, I thank you so much for being here. I thank you for all of your comments and your likes. They mean the world to me. And if you're not subscribed, this is a great time for you to do that and to hit that bell so you get notified anytime a new video comes out, whether it is recorded or live. And I will see you soon. Bye.